from its true origins to its current celebrations. Stay tuned to number one to find out 10 things you didn't know about St. Patrick's Day. Number 10. The holiday actually honors his passing. When you think of certain holidays, especially holidays honoring a person, you usually think about them celebrating a birthday, such as Christmas celebrating the birth, it would honestly happen more likely in the summer than in the dead of winter. But in the case of St. Patrick's Day, it's a holiday meant to honor him after a long and hard life of trying to help everyone he could by converting them to the Christian faith. As a member and saint of the Catholic Church, they chose to honor his passing, which just so happened to be on March 17, 461 AD. This day marked his passing and his ascension to heaven, which, for a saint like Patrick, was the ultimate reward for a man of his position. It may seem weird to honor a man's demise, especially given how many honor that fact, but the ones who understand the tradition and the culture and importance of faith will understand why it's done this way. Number 9. He wasn't Irish. When you think of St. Patrick's Day, you think of a few things, and much of it connects to Ireland in some way, shape, or form. You think about drinking, which is done a lot in Ireland. You think of shamrocks, which are mostly associated with Ireland. You think of leprechauns, which, yep, are associated the most with Ireland. And because of all of this, you likely hear the name St. Patrick and think he was Irish, right? Well, wrong. In fact, he wasn't Irish at all. He was actually Roman in birth. And as for where he was born, it was a part of what is now England. The biggest debate on the subject is whether he was born in Scotland or Wales. Regardless, it wasn't Ireland. Now that's not to say that he had no connection to Ireland. He did, but not in a good way. St. Patrick was, in fact, kidnapped by the Irish and forced to work in the fields as a shepherd for many years. Yep, St. Patrick was a slave for a time in his life. Six years to be exact. He was kidnapped at 16 and managed to escape his captors when he was 22. After he fled, he found his way to a monastery for protection and spent 12 years there gaining his deep relationship with God that would fuel the rest of his life on Earth. Speaking of which... Number 8. Why the Shamrock? Before we talk about the importance of the shamrock, take a moment to like this video and join the Zero to Hero community by using the buttons below. A forewarning, this listing is going to sound a bit religious, as the truth is, St. Patrick was, well, a saint. As I noted earlier, one of the things most associated with St. Patrick's Day is the shamrock, which is ironic because it's something associated with Ireland, which Patrick wasn't too fond of because of his ordeal with them. So that begs the question. Why the shamrock? How did all of that come into play? Well, as in all things, it's not about the location, it's about the symbolism. For as you hopefully know, a shamrock is a plant with three or four clovers, and three happens to be a very magic number, as Schoolhouse Rock hopefully taught you, especially in the Christian faith. St. Patrick used the three-leaf clover to symbolize the Christian trinity of God. In this case, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. In the Christian faith, the Holy Trinity is three different entities, and yet they're all part of God. God is everything, yet he sent a manifestation of himself to earth to save it in the form of Jesus. And then after Jesus' death on the cross, the Holy Spirit, another manifestation of God, was given to man in order to help spread the good news and word that he was trying to convey. Just like on a shamrock, the Holy Trinity are separate, like the clovers themselves, and yet are connected to be one, just like the clovers themselves. And ironically enough, this convinced Ireland to become Christians as a whole. Just goes to show how much of a good talker he was, though he did have other talents. Number 7. Snake Charmer When it comes to legends like St. Patrick, it's sadly almost a tradition to make up stories about them that are too fantastic to be true. And many of them are. George Washington is a great example of this, as his crossing the Delaware portrait is a gross misinterpretation of what happened. If he was standing up in the boat, he would have been spotted easily, and it would have made the boat unstable. But I digress. In terms of St. Patrick, his biggest legend is that he led snakes out of Ireland, saving the people from a great deal of pain and stress. One problem, there's no context as to how he got the snakes out of Ireland, or even better, why the snakes were there at all. Confused? I'll explain. Snakes? 
don't live in Ireland. At all. Seriously. Because of their cold-blooded bodies, the temperature of Ireland is one that is too cold for them to live in, in any way. Someone likely caught on to this, so the legend sometimes says that it was toads to be let out of Ireland, though this makes even less sense. And some interpret snakes as the pagan gods that the Irish used to worship before St. Patrick came around. Either way, it's very unlikely that St. Patrick ever did anything significant with snakes. But it's a heck of a story. Number 6. It wasn't celebrated when you think it was. If I were to ask you some of the big holidays celebrated in the world today, you might list St. Patrick's Day as one of them, right? So you would think that because of its grand nature that it would be celebrated all over the world for hundreds, if not thousands of years, right? I mean, St. Patrick died in 461 AD. It's 2019 right now, so that's a lot of time to celebrate it, right? Wrong. In fact, it wasn't even named an official feast day or holiday by the Irish until the 17th century, which means it was literally an unofficial holiday up to that point. As for all over the rest of the world, St. Patrick's Day was celebrated by Irish immigrants in various places like Boston in 1737, and the first American celebration of the day came in 1766. So that basically means that there was about 1200 years before it became an official holiday in the world. Bet that makes you want to go look up your other favorite holidays and see when they were first truly celebrated, huh? Number 5. The holiday color is supposed to be blue. Another great misconception about St. Patrick's Day is that it's one that has always been associated with the color green. Fun fact, it wasn't, and neither was St. Patrick himself. He was actually a man who preferred the color blue. If you look at most real, as in authenticated pictures of St. Patrick, you'll see that he's usually adorned in blue rather than green. Even King Henry VIII had him drawn in blue. So where did the green come from? Easy! Ireland! The country is known for its green countryside, and it's literally called the Emerald Isle. And when you add that to other green things in the country, it's easy to see why such a holiday would be turned green to reflect the origin of the holiday. Time changes many things after all. Number 4. No drinking allowed. Here's a thing that changed about St. Patrick's Day that'll totally blow your mind. There was a time, a very long time in fact, that St. Patrick's Day didn't allow the sale or drinking of alcohol. No, really, I mean it. And it's very easily explained as to why. You see, because it fell on March 17th, specifically, and it was considered a religious holiday, like Christmas and Easter and stuff, the decree of the land was that establishments like pubs and beer dispensers be closed on the day, in order to honor the holiday. Ironically, the only place that would sell beer in Ireland during the day was the local dog show, as that was a special occasion. Anyway, it was dry for centuries, then in 1970 the holiday was converted from a religious holiday to one of national nature, which meant that businesses could remain open for it. And so, the drinking began and it hasn't stopped since. Number 3. St. Patrick's Day Helped Gain Irish Respect I know it sounds odd to read that aloud, but when it came to Irish immigrants in America, there were not that many who respected the Irish in the land of the free. In the eyes of the colonists, the Irish were fleeing their bad situation, in this case the infamous potato famine, and came to America in such numbers that it was deplorable. Plus, the Irish talked fun, somewhat looked fun, were Catholic, and it just got them a lot of backlash from the local people. St. Patrick's Day, though, was something that all Irish immigrants would wait for and cherish when it came. And as it spread through the United States, it helped get them not just respect, but likability because it allowed them to unwind and show their skills to those who were willing to watch. And now, the United States of America wouldn't be the same without the Irish. Number 2. The Cost of Drinking Remember when I said that once alcohol was allowed on St. Patrick's Day, the world didn't stop drinking? Well, here's your proof. In 2012, a study was done on the holiday and found that across the world, $245 million is spent on beer and various other alcoholic beverages. That may seem small in context, but you need to remember, despite it being a worldly holiday, it's truthfully not one that is celebrated all over the world. It's mainly Europe and the United States. So $245 million is quite a lot of money for one day. Number 1. St. Patrick's real name was Maywin Sukit. 
I don't think I need to say anything more about this, right? Because Saint Maywin Sukit's day doesn't have the same ring to it. He later changed his name to Patricus, which of course got translated to Patrick, and the rest is history. What is your favorite way to celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Let us know in the comments below and take care.